Well, I'm pleased to say retired General Paul Borrow joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Now, the acting president, Yemi Osibanjo, has been visiting the Niger Delta, holding talks and consultations. Tell us what those visits have achieved. Yes, thank you very much. The visit of the acting president to Niger Delta has been very pragmatic and has achieved so much, particularly in terms of stability of the region, which has to do with economic as well as infrastructure development and human capacity development as well. The, um, and I've been fortunate to have been uh, accompanying the acting president in, in the states he has visited. We have so far visited Delta State, uh, Bayesa State, River State, Imo State. These four states we have visited and we're still on. But so far, the import of these visits to this region is impacting greatly. And the understanding is that the government is now with the people. Not that gap. That probably was a gap. But right now, the government at high level, the highest level of governance of Nigeria, is now with the presence of the people to ensure commitments to ensure human capacity as well as infrastructure development takes place to allow for growth right. generally. Yeah. Of course, beyond the ordinary people in the Niger Delta, the key mm -hmm. to all of this are the militants, aren't they? I mean, what is the government offering the militants that's new and different and takes President Yaradua's amnesty program of, I think, 2009 yes. forward? Yes, thank you very much. Um, the presidential amnesty program captured about 30,000 ex-agitators in 2009. And so far, so far, about 12,000 of them are yet to be developed in terms of human capacity or skills acquisition. Human capacity also has to do with educational capacity program. Um, and the stipend regime. What do I mean by this? Every month they, 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 they pay some stipends yeah. as support for their upkeep. And then, particularly in terms of giving them skills acquisition so that uh, they can have that skill with which they can develop themselves and be entrepreneurs. Um, that is that for the, for the, for the ex-agitators. Uh, then for the leaders, recently the acting president express appreciation for their concern, for their interest in allowing flow of uh, economy, in, in, in the flow of, uh, of the oil. resource, yeah. oil, in the, in the, in, in, to allow for economic growth, and promise that they will also be involved in the establishment of uh, modular refineries. So before now, there has been the concern of what to do that will make a difference in the Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. But as we speak, the government is hell-bent to ensure that uh, modular refineries are established and uh, the militants will also be involved in the processing of the, 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 the entire stock. Right. And have you now secured the cooperation and the buy-in of all militant groups in the Niger Delta, or just some of them? The militants that are captured in my program are also linked with those who are in the entire environment. They are happy with what is happening because they can see clearly that uh, some truth is being done concerning right. their care. Right. And okay. they all buy into this and they're now, happy about it. A large part of the reason why there is militancy in the Niger Delta is because in spite of all the oil wealth in the region, billions of dollars that have been allocated to the Niger Delta over the years, young people there do not have the opportunities that will stop them from choosing militancy, violence, and crime. Will paying them stipends and some of the things you talked about address the underlying issues? Um, part of, but particularly inadequate job opportunities. And this is where uh, the government is going to, to create the platform where there will be job opportunities 
as well as infrastructural development. But, but, but why has it taken so long to get to this point? I mean, do you admit that the Buhari government got things in the Niger Delta horribly wrong by threatening the militants with force rather than negotiations at the outset? And that has cost this country dearly in terms of disruption of oil production and its impact on the economy. Very good question, and I'll answer you right now. You see, resolving issues of this nature is a process. It's not a mathematical thing. It's, it's procedural. And what the government did to uh, deploy troops is not to be engaged in firefight. No, 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 no. It's on deterrence role. A military. A deterrent. Yeah, deterrence right. role. Particularly for those who are involved in uh, pipeline vandalism. The, if you sometime when I speak about this issue, the ex agitators work with security agencies to fish out perpetrators of pipelines so that they can be brought up for justice. The government of Nigeria wouldn't allow such to happen. That's why they deploy troops on deterrence role, particular deterrence role, but not to not for firefight, not to be engaged in coercive means in resolving these issues. Right. No, 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 no. It has always been to ensure that those who are perpetrators of that act are brought to justice. Right. So is it your sense then um, that this solution that you're proffering now, the vice president visiting their acting president, you, of course, from the region yourself, a former general, um, special advisor to the Nigerian president, coordinator of the presidential amnesty program, is this, this solution temporary or permanent? Let me be elaborate about it because that's my feel as well. In resolving uh, resource-based conflict requires holistic approach. The government, the people, all inclusive to ensure it is resolved and it's a process. Dialogue and issues that has to do with uh, peace building, confidence building, all to resolving the issues are all what the government is focusing on for now. Dialogue strategically to meet with people that are consigned to, uh, 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 stakeholders so that uh, they can meet with them and discuss the key issues concerning the region. And this is the unfolding in the pragmatic move by the acting president. Okay, General Paul Boro, special advisor to the Nigerian president on Niger Delta and coordinator of the, coordinator of the presidential amnesty program. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, please.